Hi, I'm Nate Sipple, and I'm a Tight Lines Guide, and today we're going to be tying Bill Murdich's Murdich Minnow. It's a very versatile fly. It can be used. It, it uh, likes to suspend just below the surface. It has a lot of movement to it, a lot of action. Um, you can add a sink tip to it if you'd like to. You can fish it a little bit deeper, but primarily we like to fish it just below the surface for those aggressive takes. Um, we're going to tie this fly on a Tiemco TMC 8089 uh, in a size 10. We're going to be using a GSP thread. I like to use this thread because it's quite a bit stronger. You can get a good firm wrap on the hook shank. We're gonna start our thread. I like to start about a quarter of the way down the hook shank past the eye. And then we're gonna wrap right to the back to where it starts to bend. Clip off that tag end. Next we're gonna use white bucktail. Uh, you're gonna wanna pick a clump of fairly straight fibers. You don't have to stack the tips on this. You're going to want to kind of want a natural, you know, if you've got some longer ones in the middle and stuff like that, that kind of gives it that really nice bait fish profile. And you're going to want to go fairly long on this. You're going to want to go probably one and a half times to maybe, you know, one and three quarters times as long as your hook shank is here. And then start to secure it. Now again, I mentioned before that I was using GSP. One of the advantages to using GSP in this stage here is that you can really crank down on this bucktail on your shank and you're not going to worry about snapping off your thread. Now what I like to do here is I like to take some of this excess and just kind of pull it up and trim it off. And then just kind of secure those butts down. The next step, what you're going to need are two different tones of flashaboo. We have pearl and that's going to be your, your under your under layer of flashaboo. And then you're going to want to use silver and that's going to be your top that's going to kind of look like that flashy top side of the minnow. You're going to want to take a decent clump of pearl flashaboo. Um, I like to tie dress these fairly liberally with the flashaboo. I like to go a little bit longer than what you have your bucktail on here. Not a whole lot, just you know a little bit past the tips. So take your clump, cut it off, and then you're going to want to tie it in right at about the same point or the same area that you tied in and secured your bucktail. All right, the next step is to add in the silver flashaboo over the top. Now for this top layer, you're going to want to cut it a little bit longer because we're going to be folding some of that back to form part of the collar. So you're going to want to go about the same length as you went with your pearl flashaboo on top, but you're going to want to move towards the head and cut it about the total length from the back of your pearl flashaboo up to your eye. You're going to want to tie that in right on top with that excess coming out to the front. Wrap it down. like so. Use your GSP and, and really get a good solid under base and crank that stuff down so this stuff isn't going to spin on the hook and move it all. The next step is to take some white ice fur which is a crinkly synthetic material and then you're going to want to take a clump of it about that size. Um, you can do a little bit of experimentation. What this does to the fly is it adds a little bit of bulk to it, so it's not quite so slender, and it kind of start. It kind of helps to give it that little bit of kick in the water that it has when you're retrieving it. You're going to want to take it, and I've already cut this a little bit, but you're going to want to kind of fairly even out those points like that, fairly close. Uh, you're you're going to trim a little bit of them at the end, anyways. And then from the point where you've got everything secured in there. You're going to want to go past that maybe three-eighths of an inch to anywhere up to three-quarters of an inch. Select your piece, cut it, and what we're going to do is we're going to tie one clump in on either side of the hook shank. So we're going to lay that right in there, secure it with the GSP, and then we're going to go back and now to that same clump that you cut off of before so that you are sure that you have fairly uniform size on either side. Cut another piece off. 
and they'll go right on the other side. And again, you're securing your your ice fur and your flashaboo all at once. Now with your flashaboo, your silver flashaboo that's going forward through all of that, you're going to want to take that, you're going to want to grab it out here at the hook eye, and then you're just going to want to fold it right back like that. So it's going back over the top of that ice fur. Once you get it folded back, just a couple of wraps to secure that. And now with all that excess you've got in there, try to keep some of your longer fibers out of there. You just want to going to want to go back a little bit longer than the length of your ice fur and just kind of trim that off. So you've got that little top wing up on there. Now right here what I like to do, I'll just come ahead and any of this ice fur and flashaboo that's ahead of your materials here, just kind of go in and just kind of trim some of this off. All right, with your pearl estaz, you're going to want to take a piece that's, you know, anywhere from eight to nine inches long. You want to make sure that you have enough because nothing will will wreck your day more than realizing you don't have enough and trying to splice in another piece into the middle. You know, want to take that behind you, tie in the point, or tie in the end of it, right where you've tied the rest of your materials. Give it a few wraps, and then you're going to want to wrap that thread, wind that thread forward right up to your hook eye. Now to get this full head and this full profile here, you're going to want to make these wraps fairly tight and very close to, each, uh, to, the, to the previous one. So as you're pulling them back, really pull them back and wrap that stuff down right ahead of the previous wrap. Again, stroking the fibers back with each wrap. Either. Now once you get up to the, to the to the eye of the hook, stay just a little bit back so you have yourself enough room to secure that. And then we're going to secure it off with just a couple wraps. Now for the most part, for as far as the tying part of this fly goes, it's pretty much done. You're just going to want to throw a whip finish onto it. Now the next step is we're going to be using a Prismacolor pen. And the color that we're going to use on this particular color scheme, which I think is the most productive, is a cool gray. And to color it, you're just going to want to take and you're just going to want to kind of move those fibers back like so. And then do a couple forward to kind of get the undersides of those. It helps to darken that up a little bit and then go back. And you can kind of see how the top of that fly is getting that darker look to it. You Next we're going to be adding in the eyes. For eyes, I like to use the Spirit River 3D molded and again uh, with the size 10s and the size 6s and anything up to even a one knot, I like to use the 5 millimeter. You're going to want to take some Zappa Gap gel. Traditional Zappa Gap or original Zappa Gap seems to be a little bit runny for this and you're going to get it stuck to your fingers and whatnot. You're going to want to turn the fly right on its side. Take your Zappa Gap and a bodkin or the little applicator that comes with it if you'd like to. Get a little bit on there and go right just forward of about halfway of your estaz. Then you're going to want to take your eye and just kind of loosely put it on there. Press it gently a couple times. If you squeeze them too much you tend to get too much of a compressed profile from the top. You like to keep that kind of, you know, as full of a head as you can. If you squeeze them together too much, you'll get that really, really narrow head. So that's roughly what it would look like from the side. And you're going to want to just do the other side the same way you did the first side. A little Zappa Gap gel. Five millimeter eye of your choice. Place it on there. Just kind of press it gently against there. And there's your finished fly, the Murdoch Minnow. This fly was originally tied on a saltwater hook and designed for saltwater, particularly for stripers, but it has become one of our go-to flies for smallmouth. And if I had to pick a fly out of my box any day of the week to chase smallmouth with, this would probably be it.